Today I was finishing up a customer project. This is going to be a display stand for their bakery. But I wanted to show you some of the tips that I do for finishing uh, cabinetry. Or this is a display stand, but the same thing applies to building cabinets when you're painting it. Or this is going to be natural, so we're just going to be putting a clear coat of finish on it. So this display stand is going to be for a bakery uh, for cupcakes and breads that they make. And this is going to have a back that we're going to install here. But what I wanted to show was I like to build cabinets or especially like this display stand without the back on it because it makes when I spray the clear coat or the lacquer on it uh, easier because when you start spraying into the cavity of a object then the, you get a lot of overspray so like when you're trying to spray into this corner here uh, you're going to be spraying this way and then you're getting a lot of overspray. It's going to be hitting here, and the, the spray overspray doesn't have anywhere to go, so it sticks back onto the part you just finished. Well, what I like to do is to finish the cabinets off and 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 leave the back off of the cabinet and do that separately. That way, when you're spraying it, you can spray from the inside and uh, spray out, and then the overspray goes out. Now, if it's a big cabinet, then you can also go from the back side of the cabinet and uh, spray from that side if you need to. But this should be small enough and we should be able to get, get it from one side. So that's the big reason why I finish my products without the back on it. And for this being smaller, um, and this is not going to have a stain or anything, I didn't want to put 18 gauge nails to hold in uh, the side when I uh, put the shelf in. So I just used pin nailers and pinned them in so it has the minimal amount of uh, exposure of the head of the nail. So because of that, I wanted to make sure that this display wouldn't rack or anything like that. I added to the bottom here just some strips of wood and nailed to the bottom of the feet. Now the reason I put it here instead of on the back is because this is the less likely spot that you will see any nail holes. Even though I did use the pin nailer, uh, I still wanted to try to hide it as best I can. That way this will keep it from uh, racking back and forth. Because this is probably, this is a three and a half foot long display. So with just glue, the glue should hold it, but with the glue and just pin nails, it could rack. So I wanted to make it sure it was extra secure with the runners here on the bottom. So we will be putting plexiglass in this groove right here so it will hold any items from slipping off and I think it will turn out really nice I love this modern look with the Baltic birch uh, plywood with the Baltic birch you get the 13 layers this is half inch so or I'm sorry you get the I think it's 11 layers here let's uh, get into the paint booth and let's get some clear on our project as we're setting up the items in the paint booth I'd added a few more touches to it. Um, I wanted to spray the back instead of in a horizontal position vertical. So I, all I did was add some feet to the um, sides and then nailed it with the pen nailer. I did that on both sides. So that way it can stand up and I can spray both finished sides at the same time rather than having to wait to spray it, wait for it to dry and then flip it over because we're going to probably put about two or three coats on here. We'll just have to see. And also, you'll notice the blue tape in some of the areas. I went ahead and uh, covered that up because that's where our glue lines are going to be, and I didn't want any finish to be, uh, to be attached to the areas where the glue is going to go because the wood glue works better when it's attached to raw wood rather than anything that has paint or finish on it. So that's why we had the blue tape, and I went ahead and added that on to the edges there. Before we get started uh, spraying, I wanted to show you kind of my setup. If you can ever learn how to spray lacquer, which is really easy to do, just takes a little bit of practice. I use a product called Blue Ridge Products. They're actually local to me um, in Georgia, North Georgia, so I get it directly from them. Uh, I think Sure Williams has a good product. Uh, I haven't used them, but uh, that's where I hear a lot of people get from a national chain, get their lacquer from. I want to try to start getting into the uh, water-based products but I haven't gotten into, into that stage yet. But lacquer, the reason I love lacquer because it dries in basically 15 minutes. And all I do is I spray it with, uh, this is a Harbor Freight. This is when they used to give you coupons and it was $9.99 for a gun. I've got multiple 
because uh, I, I keep them separate. Uh, this is my clear gun. I've got one for colored, lacquered. I've got some for uh, water-based paint. And we can talk about that in a future video, but I just want to show you. Always good to have an air regulator um, on the end of it so you can adjust the pressure here instead of having to go back to your air compressor and changing it there. And then there's just a water separator. It, I mean, it, it works. It's a little long, but it does the job. And for the air compressor, you don't have to have a super huge air compressor to push this. Uh, since I do smaller projects and I'm not constantly doing it all day long, this is all I really need. It, it is uh, the 27 gallon Harbor Freight uh, and it does get the 5.1 CFMs. I've used it for smaller. Um, I just got this one because my other one broke and the other one was only getting about 4 S, uh, S CFMs and uh, it was working just fine. I just happened to go up this a little bigger because I had some other air tools I wanted to use with it. But uh, if, if you're not doing all day, every day, then something like this for the home use or smaller one-off projects like what I use works just fine um, and it keeps up with what I spray. So uh, don't let anybody, you don't have to have those huge 60 gallon, three phase uh, air compressors to run these HVLPs. So this is clear. Um, I'm stirring it. Uh, it doesn't look clear now, but it dries clear. It's kind of a milky color now. So we will get this into our gun and we will start uh, spraying. So I got my uh, 3M uh, respirator. I think this is the best respirator I've found and it's a very good, reasonable priced uh, respirator. I'll have a link below to this item uh, in the comments if you're interested in it. But I'd highly recommend, uh, you definitely need to wear this when doing lacquer because it is strong. And then I uh, always got the safety glasses for any splashback in the eyes. I can't replace those. Let's get started. So after we got the first coat down, I want to go over uh, with everything to get all the nibs off. This is 220. Uh, this is the 3M uh, sanding paper. I really like it. It's very smooth and consistent. And I just like to go over everything. And it gets it ni the base nice and smooth. Now when I spray, I like to uh, put in light coats. And then maybe the last one's kind of uh, uh, a little bit thicker, but just night light. Nice light, light coats will do the job. So I'm going to go over all this, sand it down just a little bit to get it smooth, and then we will put the second coat on everything. So with the setting of my gun, some people ask me kind of where, where I run it. Uh, I'll give you general uh, settings and then you just need to play with it depending on the type of material you're using. Since we're using lacquer, and it's kind of a thin, uh, substance and I don't cut it or anything I just use it straight um, the fan the fan setting I set it up at about 80 to 90 percent all the way up the rear how much material is uh, is going through I'd only do about one one and a half turns in so there's a lot of fluid going through it and then the pressure uh, I usually have to play with it depending on each time I do it, but it's it's set around uh, 40 to 80. Your compressor will be different since mine's a smaller unit. It probably needs more pressure to get the same consistency. But I like to do some test shots uh, on a cardboard and kind of see where we're at right before I start to spray it on something. That way I get a general idea of how well it's coming out. That tells me how speed, uh, how fast I need to, uh, to paint it too. You can't hear me. But remember, wear your PPE before we get started spraying. As you can see, because we have the back off of the display unit, I'm able to spray from the front and then move around to the back side to get more of the uh, back side of the display, mostly on the bottom shelf where if it was enclosed, I wouldn't be able to get my gun in there to spray. So that's the benefit of having the back off um, and spraying it. 
and also by having the back off uh, you can see I can spray the front and the back of the uh, the back of the display independently and having it stand straight up so I can get both sides uh, at the same time rather than having to do one side and then flipping it over alright there you have it we've got the back uh, attached to the uh, main base of the display the finish turned out great I inserted the plexiglass uh, stops right here it does have the protective film on there I won't remove that until it gets delivered uh, but this clear plexiglass that will be holding uh, so the items don't slip off the uh, ledge there because they are slanted so remember the ABC's of making always be creating till next time <laughs>